Let's now talk about the superior vena cava and its associated veins. So in this video, we're first going to talk briefly about the superior vena cava. We will talk a little bit about the acicus vein. Then we will cover the hemiacicus vein and the accessory hemiacicus vein. And after that, we will talk about the right and the left brachiocephalic veins. We will go through their characteristics, their tributaries, and, and what structures they all uh, generally drain. Awesome. So the easiest way to understand the veins of the systemic circulation is to divide them into their own systems. The veins of the heart form their own system. We have the veins of the inferior vena cava, which is responsible for draining the lower half of the body, veins of the superior vena cava for the upper half of the body, and the portal system, which drain nutrition from intestines and waste products from the spleen and dump them into the liver to be processed, which then lead the blood into the inferior vena cava again. So these are the four main systems we have in our bodies. Let's now talk briefly about the superior vena cava and its associated veins. The superior vena cava is a short vein, as you see here, and it has a quite large diameter, approximately 2 to 3 centimeters wide. It carries deoxygenated blood from the upper half of the body, so the head and neck and upper limbs and thorax and the upper part of the back. Then it descends vertically to empty into the right atrium at the level of the third uh, sternocostal joint. So that was mainly everything for the superior vena cava. Now let's talk about the azygous vein, which is a vein that drains into the superior vena cava. The azygous vein is located very close to the vertebrae, right behind the inferior vena cava. So if we cut through the inferior vena cava, we will be able to see the azygous vein here very clearly. Okay, so where does it get its blood from? Well, here you see the common iliac vein. The common iliac vein has a tributary called the right ascending lumbar vein. And this vein becomes the azygous vein at around the 12th thoracic vertebrae. And as the azygous vein ascends along the right side of the vertebral column, it arches anteriorly at the level of T4 and then empty into the superior vena cava. So here are some fun facts about the azygous vein. The Greek root zyg refers to pear. A stands for not, so A, zygus, means unpaired. That's why you will find this vein only on the right side of the vertebral column, while on the left side, you will find the hemiazygus and its accessory on the left side of the body. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Another thing that's good to know is that the azygous vein and the hemiazygus vein are valveless. Usually, when, when you study veins, you will see that veins have valves to prevent backflow of blood. These two doesn't have any of these. They therefore may function as portocaval or cavocaval anastomosis, meaning if there's a, a liver disease that causes narrowing of the portal vein, the blood starts shunting over to other places since it can't get through the liver. So the blood starts going through the esophageal branches of the azygous vein, causing esophageal varices. All right, that was a little uh, fun fact about the azygous vein. So it do have tributaries or side branches, if you may. It has visceral tributaries and parietal tributaries. Visceral going to organs and parietal going to um, structures like the muscles and bones. And so I want to start with this vein right here called the hemiazygous vein. Similar to the azygous vein, the hemiazygous vein also starts from the ascending lumbar vein, but the uh, left one this time at around T12. And it empties into the azygous vein at around T8 to T9. We also have the accessory hemiazygous vein a little higher up, which receives blood from the left 4th to 7th intercostal veins. These veins vary a lot between people. It can either anastomose with the left superior intercostal vein of the left brachiocephalic vein, or not. It can just start from the 4th to 7th left intercostal veins as well. And in the lower direction, it can either anastomose with the hemiazygous vein, or anastomose with the azygous vein, as you see here. That's why studying veins can be very daunting at times. There are so many variations. Now, let's add some organs. The first visceral tributary of the azygous vein is the esophageal veins. If we go ahead and turn this model to the side, we will see that both the azygous and the hemiazygous veins have tributary veins that drain the esophagus. And if we go ahead and add the bronchi, you will see that it also has the bronchial veins that drain into the azygous vein. We have uh, pericardial veins as well. 
and mediastinal veins draining uh, various structures in the mediastinum like the lymph nodes. All right, let's now add the ribs on the right side. The azygous vein has parietal tributary veins called the right superior intercostal veins, which drain the second and third right intercostal spaces, sometimes the fourth as well. It has the right posterior intercostal veins, which drain the lower eight right intercostal spaces. Now, just to give you a complete picture, on the left side, we have the left posterior intercostal veins, which drain into the accessory and the hemiazygous vein. All right. Then we have a vein that's associated with the diaphragm called the superior phrenic vein. That was the azygous and the hemiazygous vein. Now, as the superior vena cava ascends, it splits into the right and the left brachiocephalic veins. And these two veins are formed by a union of the subclavian vein and the internal jugular vein. Now let's go ahead and zoom in and focus on these two for a minute. Even though the right and the left brachiocephalic vein have identical names, there are quite a few differences between their tributaries and size. You know, veins are generally very asymmetrical due to their variations. The right brachiocephalic vein is about 3 cm long, while the left one is about 6 cm long. Let's now go ahead and go through the tributaries. The right brachiocephalic vein receives blood from the right vertebral vein, which goes through the vertebral transverse foramina, as you see here. So what it does is that it drains the external and the internal vertebral venous plexuses and the deep muscles of the uh, back in the neck region. It collects all of that blood, then it goes down through the transverse foramina together with the vertebral artery and then opens into the right brachiocephalic vein. Next, we have the right inferior thyroid vein. This vein originates from a glandular venous plexus at the thyroid gland and then it descends and travels superficially to the trachea and inserts into the brachiocephalic vein. Next, we have the right internal thoracic vein. It follows exactly the same path as the internal thoracic artery. It will descend along the anterior wall of the thoracic cavity. On its way, it mainly drains the upper 5-6 intercostal space, and then at the level of the 7th rib, it receives blood from two veins. One of them is the muscular phrenic vein, which receives blood from the lower 5-6 intercostal spaces, as the anterior intercostal branches. And the other one is a superior epigastric vein, which passes the diaphragm at the sternocostal triangle and communicates with the inferior epigastric vein. And all of these anterior intercostal veins communicate with the posterior intercostal veins we mentioned earlier. All right. Next, we have the right supreme intercostal vein, this one, which drains the upper one, two intercostal spaces. So that was the most important tributaries of the right brachiocephalic vein. Now let's turn this model to the other side and cover the left brachiocephalic vein. The left brachiocephalic vein has more or less the same tributaries as the right one, which is the left vertebral vein, the left inferior thyroid vein, the left internal thoracic vein, and the left supreme intercostal vein. But it do have some additional tributaries we should mention here as well. And the first one is the left superior intercostal vein, which drain the upper three, four intercostal spaces on the left side. And then there's another vein that drains the thymus, called the thymic veins. And then there's the pericardiophrenic vein, which drain uh, tributaries from the superior diaphragm and the pericardium. So that was all the veins that I wanted to cover in this video. The next video is going to be about the veins of the upper limb.